The history of the Indian diaspora in Uganda began with British colonization. From the earliest days of colonial occupation, the British administrators made use of temporary Indian workers as well as mercenaries from the north of the subcontinent. It was the result of deliberate choices by the British administration between 1894 to 1962. They were brought to the Uganda Protectorate by the British to serve as buffer between Europeans and Africans in the middle ranks of commerce and administration. In 1895, a contingent of the 300 Punjabi troops from India regiment was sent to Uganda to join the colonial army. In 1897, Major Mark Donald, commander of the colonial forces in Uganda, received 30 seconds recruited especially for Uganda. In the same year, another 150 troops were dispatched from India to Uganda. In 1898, 400 more troops found their way into Uganda. In addition, in the 1890s, 32,000 laborers from British India were brought to South East Africa under indentured labor contracts to work on the construction of the Uganda Railway. Most of the surviving Indians returned home, but 6,724 individuals decided to remain in the African Great Lakes after the line's completion. In subsequent years, new immigrants, mostly traders, settled in Uganda. As their businesses prospered, they called on their family and community relatives to send new immigrants from India in form of employees and associates. The Indian immigration in Uganda continued to be encouraged by the colonial officials. In the early 20th century, Commissioner Sahari Johnston said that he wanted Indians to play an intermediary role between Africans and Europeans. Many Indians living in Uganda were instrumental in transforming the country as agents of the new economic order imposed by the colonial administration. Sheikh Ardina Vizlam Lalji may be cited as an example in this regard. He was a versatile trader who dealt in cloves, ivory and paraffin products. When the construction of the railway began, his business empire can be currently considered as the pioneer mode of chain stores because it soon exceeded 200 branches scattered in eastern and central Africa. Building the Uganda economy by Indians. Nasava G came to East Africa as an assistant to Aldina Vislam in the 1890s and by 1910 he had established his own shop and was setting up branches and importing assistants himself. Ali Mohammed Kamali was a low cadre employee in a shop in Jinja. He later established an important coffee and cotton trade. Kamali's name was so popular that Ugandans nicknamed him Mokwano Gwabanji, meaning a friend of many people. The short form of the nickname Mokwano subsequently became the name of his business empire. In 1954, the 5,819 licensed traders of the Uganda colony belonged to 32 different castes and communities. Uganda had almost 75,000 Indians belonging to different religious and statutory committees before their expulsion of August 1972. Most of them were descendants, second or third generation of pioneer Indians. The expulsion within 90 days was ordered by Idi Amin Dada. A minority of about 100 people decided to remain in the country. At the time, Indians owned 90% of the country's businesses and accounted for 90% of Ugandan tax revenues. After the fall of the Idi Amin, only a section of expelled Indians returned to Uganda. With Yoweri Museveni coming to power in 1986, the return of Indians was confirmed. More Indians came back in 1993 after the government had guaranteed former property owners that the expropriated property would be returned to them.
1912, Muljibai Madvani, then aged 18, arrived in Jinja, following his older brother, Najibai, starting in 1914. He was able to join his brother's small trading concern and helped create a business that would later account for 10% of Uganda's gross domestic product. In 1985, the family returned to Uganda and with loans from the World Bank, they resurrected and rehabilitated their businesses and started new ones. Meta Group. The Meta Group of Companies is an Indian conglomerate based in Mumbai and headquartered in Gangahinaga with subsidiaries in the United States, Canada, Kenya and Uganda. The group was founded by Nanji Kalidas Meta, who was born in India in the late 19th century. In 1900, at the age of 13 years, he migrated to Uganda and started a series of businesses that included a tea plantation, a cotton ginery, a sugarcane plantation and a sugar factory. Rupelaria Group. Dr. Sudir Rupelaria is the richest businessman in Uganda with an estimated fortune of $800 million. He started the business from scratch with $25,000 and since then have built up into seven different sectors of the business and employs more than 8,000 people in this country. Mukwano Group. Mukwano Group of companies, commonly known as the Mukwano Group, is a conglomerate based in Uganda with operations in other East African countries. It employs over 6,000 people, led by the current CEO, Tony Gadoke. House of Dauda. House of Dauda, led by Hasmok Dauda was established in 1962. Its headquarters are in Kampala, Uganda. Its wide range of products include fruit juices, mineral water, confectionery, warehousing, and apartments complexed with an estimated revenue of $500 million by 2019. Alam Group. Alam Group is a private conglomerate with a wide range of investments in agriculture, aluminium, steel, electricity generation, real estate and sugar manufacturing. Nyanza Textile Industries Limited. Nitil is the largest integrated textile industry in Uganda. It has facilities for spinning, weaving, coloring and tailoring. Spinning capacity is 8,000 kilograms per 24 hours. Also, in 24 hours, the factory can weave 100,000 meters and tailor 8,000 t-shirts. The plant produces 150,000 bells of fabric annually, of which 15,000 are sold inside Uganda and the rest is exported. Chiboko Group of Companies Chiboko Group of Companies consists of Chiboko Enterprises Limited, Abacus Pharma, and abacus parental drugs. Its investments include importing and distribution, general merchandise, procurement services, agricultural implements, hardware and building material, general commodities, general trading, electrical and healthcare. Balaji Group has been producing biscuits, flavored drinks and purified water of impeccable quality with great passion and devotion under the brand names Atis and Lifeline. In 2010, Balaji Group launched its agriculture unit, Balaji Agro Industries. MMP Group. This is one of the Uganda's fastest growing nationwide business group. In just 20 years, it has created 35 manufacturing units across 15 sectors and about 10,000 jobs. Pearl Dairy Farms. Pearl Dairy Farms Limited, the factory is built on 15 acres and has capacity to process 500,000 liters of milk daily. Rafik Group of Companies. 
The Rafik Group of Companies has arms in manufacturing of soap, cooking oil, toilet rolls, textiles and real estate. It was founded by Hussein Mohammed, who is also known as Muzei Rafik Hussein Lira. Spencon. Spencon was established by Jitendra Chata Patel in September 1979. In addition to its business in Kenya, it began operating in Tanzania and Uganda, India and Zambia. It also had operations in Malawi, Mozambique and Southern Sudan. Dot Services, a Ugandan company founded in 1994, is one of the leading construction engineering companies in the Great Lakes region. It employs between 500 to 1,000 people. Other notable Indian manufacturers include Modern Group, Shumuk, Toro Cement, Roofings, Tembo Steels, Uganda Bati, and Kiri Bottling Company. Indians and persons of Indian origin play a key role in the Ugandan economy, in the manufacturing, trade and service sectors. Indian businesses employ thousands of Ugandans and contribute at least 62% to Uganda's tax revenue annually. The Indian Military Advisory and Training Team has been deployed at the Senior Command and Staff College in Jinja, Uganda, since April 2016. Indian Association in Uganda, with hope of the Indian Military Training Team, set up a military war game center in Jinja District. While commissioning the war game center at the Uganda Senior Command and Staff College in Kimaka in Jinja District, the president said, this center is also a great gesture of the wide cooperation and support we enjoy with the government and the people of India. In conclusion, the Indian Association of Uganda has grown by leaps and bounds for the past 100 years, from the early immigrants to becoming the key pillars of Uganda's economy. The association supports society charitable endeavors that serve the common good to demonstrate loyalty to Uganda and to create a good relationship between the Ugandan Indians and Ugandan Africans. Key among its achievements is enabling Uganda's Indian community enjoy peace and its efforts to build cohesive societies. In 1972, the military ruler of Uganda, His Excellency Idi Amin, ordered the expulsion of Indians from Uganda accusing Indians of milking Uganda's money. Since the Indian communities returned to the country in the 1980s and 1990s, Indian Association Uganda re-established and worked hard to build the relationship between Indians and African communities in Uganda through its charitable activities. And now, Indians have once again become a pillar of the country despite making up less than 1% of the population. The Indians are estimated to contribute up to 65% of Uganda tax revenue. Congratulations, Indian Association of Uganda, for making 100 years in Uganda, the pearl of Africa.